either this is madness or it is hell. <laughs> uh, so exclaims the main character in E.A. Abbott's 1884 novel Flatland when he's transported out of his two-dimensional world into a, a world with a third dimension and so must both uh, intellectualize and make a leap of faith in order to visualize and come to terms with a new reality, a situation not dissimilar, I think, to what universities, libraries, publishers, uh, faculty, researchers, and our students face uh, as we continue uh, to move from an analog into an increasingly digital world. It is, on one level, an existential crisis we've been facing. <coughs> Who are we? Uh, what is this world? Um, what are we doing? Our libraries and our profession itself uh, is operating in a new reality in which social, political, economic, and intellectual, and educational structures are redefined and reshaped by technology and globalization. Libraries must be multifaceted and nimble in this fluid environment in order to most effectively meet the needs of the diversity of our user groups as the transition to a global digital knowledge economy becomes ever more pervasive. Established methods of working and learning have been eroded and continue to erode, opening up new and hitherto unimagined spaces and opportunities for research libraries to have meaningful impacts on our citizens' lives. Increasingly, our parent institutions are looking to existing and potential new partnerships and collaborations within and outside of the higher education sector to meet institutional missions and mandates as they relate to creating positive change for people and the planet. The manifestation of long-held values of excellence, uh, ethical and intellectual integrity, freedom of inquiry and speech, and equity, diversity, and inclusion are increasingly made explicit in furthering our institution's active engagement and integration with the myriad of communities we serve or should serve. We will be called, I think, in our libraries, if we haven't already been, to go beyond our walls, operate outside of local and traditional environments, to fully align ourselves with the vision and mission of our institutions, the life cycle of teaching, research, and learning that drives the academy, and the expectations of our citizens and funding bodies. So my argument uh, this afternoon will be simply that we need to reflect more deeply on our collaborations, to seek out community in the broadest sense of the term, to work increasingly and intentionally across sectors, uh, to open ourselves and our business practices to the advantages of meaningful and sustained partnerships, and to realize that in so doing, we will be reaffirming the core values upon which our profession is based. How do we define community and a role within it? The image you see here is a visualization of sustainable community based on the work of Fritjof Capra, the Austrian-born American physicist and systems theorist, whose work, I think, has implications for how we might think of collaboration. Evolution, Kappa writes, uh, is no longer seen as a competitive struggle for existence, but rather a cooperative dance in which creativity and the, co and the constant emergence of novelty are the driving forces. So, too, organizations need not be viewed as atomized, siloed, and tightly managed machines. More, they need to be viewed as vibrant, living organisms interacting with, within emergent and self-regulating and self-organizing ecosystems. The nimbleness and openness Capra challenges us to consider is, of course, not necessarily easy, as it's imbued with ambiguity and paradox, the need to re re relinquish and share control, to explore more radical forms of, of partnership. In so doing, this will strengthen our organization's collective ability to operate in a global and digital environment, an environment that compels us to collaborate and compels our libraries to reposition themselves lest we ossify and become irrelevant to our users. So what do we do? Well, whoop. I've got, well, what do we do? <laughs> there we go. We relax. This one's for you, Caroline, wherever you are. Uh, we relax, uh, we stay calm, we, uh, we reflect on our values. And this incidentally is my daughter who made me pay $5 for a single use, uh, <laughs> uh, so it's a little bit concerning, but you know, yeah. 
uh, libraries are, are institutions that tell us about ourselves. They tell us what we know, what we do not know, what we value, what we need. We contribute to the individual's knowledge, enjoyment, and inspiration, cultural values, lifelong learning, economic prosperity, and social equality. And we're so good at this. Indeed, at its best, our profession, in the words of the mid-20th century American writer and uh, university librarian at UCLA, Lawrence Clark Powell, ours is an artful craft and a crafty art to be practiced with a trinity of talents, hands, head, and heart. What better skill set is there to, the art of, to bring to the art of cross-sectoral collaboration? Librarians should be the world's experts in this regard. Indeed, I firmly believe that contrary to some ill-informed media narratives, and even if uh, some of us in our profession have yet to realize it, our libraries and librarianship, and particularly, I think, research libraries, have entered a new golden age in which as physical and virtual spaces, as organizations that can model partnership and collaboration, as individuals who have the skills and tools to navigate the digital paradigm shifts and who will be called upon as key partners with researchers, will have never more profound and fundamental impact on the social, intellectual, and economic well-being of citizens the vibrant, and the vibrancy of our educational institutions and our communities. So that's all a precursor to what I really came here to talk about, uh, namely how we're beginning to frame our thinking about cross-sectoral collaboration in Canada. And I hope you'll see both uh, in the, the national and provincial frameworks as well as a, a couple of local examples, if you'll indulge me, how this uh, helps to articulate the value of research libraries within the research mission of our institutions, as well as the, the civic and community engagement missions of our, our universities. And so I'm going to spend, the, uh, I think, my remaining time outlining the emerging national discussion that began um, just around a year and a half ago with the Ottawa Declaration. Uh, as well as drawing attention to some interesting developments then in my region of British Columbia and provide a few examples of local initiatives that might inspire you to reflect broadly on the advantages of collaboration. <laughs> and then if I have time, perhaps leave you with a challenge to bring forward into your own professional context. Uh, in December 2016, uh, the Library and Archives Canada organized a two-day summit to explore the social and economic value of galleries libraries, archives, and museums, the so-called GLAMs, to share research and to discuss ideas for further collaboration, future collaboration, uh, innovation, and partnership. The, there were about 300 attendees uh, who hailed from a wild, wide variety of backgrounds, including a member of parliament, deputy ministers, CEOs, presidents, executive directors, librarians, curators, archivists, artists, writers, economists, uh, actors, and, and many others. Uh, the impetus was that GLAM organizations were felt not, not to be significantly involved in the national conversation on the future of the uh, culture in the digital age. The goal was to recognize uh, our collective responsibility uh, across sectors to make certain that the powers that be and, and the general public themselves understood the important critical role that GLAMs continue to play in society. Consider, for instance, that one of the most misunderstood roles of GLAM institutions is a demonstrable link between our activities and economic prosperity. Uh, the British Library estimates that for every pound of public funding it receives annually, four pound 90 is generated for U the, the UK economy. And that five to one ratio is similar in Canada according to recent studies, both at the Toronto Public Library and the Ottawa Public Library. So through the discussions, presenters emphasized how collaboration can generate a multitude of serendipitous opportunities. It became quickly apparent that to foster innovation and to meet the demands of users, memory institutions can no longer go it alone. Partnership and collaboration between GLAMs as well as non-traditional partners are key and in a world that is constantly evolving, it was emphasized that GLAMs, like all public facing institutions, should not wait for perfect circumstances. Rather, they should seize opportunities when they present themselves before change is forced upon them. Uh, the mood was best summarized by my colleague, uh, Maureen Sawa, who's the CEO of the Greater Victoria Public Library, who noted at the summit that the objective, and I quote, was not to do more with less, it's to do more with more, more partnerships, more collaborations. 
And from this, Guy Bertillon, librarian and archivist of Canada, proposed what has now been dubbed the Ottawa Declaration, which has provided uh, the framework for ongoing cross-sectoral thinking and discussion. It calls for members of GLAM communities to commit to find new ways of working together to increase the visibility and impact of memory institutions in order to, and I quote again, continually adapt and reinvent our institutions and promote the full value of libraries, archives, and museums to Canadians. So just over six weeks ago, a follow-up summit was held in Toronto, like the first summit with the support of the Canadian Commission for, for UNESCO and in collaboration with the Canadian Museums Association. And building on last year's summit, the discussion drew on four themes and, and a related set of questions. First, communities. How can collaborative relationships among GLAMs benefit local communities, as well as provide greater opportunities for building links and fostering community ad identity? Secondly, Indigenous Peoples, uh, which is a particular uh, discussion going on in Canada, which we'll come back to. How can GLAMs work more closely with Indigenous Peoples to renew relationships that are based on mutual understanding or, and respect? Uh, the private sector. How can GLAMs work with the private sector to encourage uh, greater innovation? And of course, government prior priorities. How can GLAMs advance their interests via vis 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 uh, various levels of government? The need for a supporting narrative that demonstrates the, the relevance and value and the breadth of uh, the social and economic benefits of GLAMS to these four communities emerged as a, a core um, learning from the summit. Uh, throughout the course of this year, it's anticipated that Library and Archives Canada will continue to take a leadership role in helping to facilitate and to broaden ongoing discussions at the national level to keep focus on the importance of cross-sectoral collaboration and ideally act as a catalyst to action. Already a third summit is being planned by the Ottawa Declaration Working Group, which has also undertaken a comparative environmental scan of cultural policies of Canada, Italy, Spain, France, and the UK as an aid to and to provide data for national cultural policy development in Canada. Concurrent to the uh, developments at the national level, a year ago in March, uh, just almost exactly a year ago, the British Columbia Museums Association, the BC Library Association, and the Archives Association of BC signed a memorandum of understanding that explicates a set of shared values and strategies to work together. Uh, here on the slide, you see representatives from the associations uh, with, uh, um, at the time, the, the Minister of Community Sport and Cultural Development in the province. This, is, uh, this new partnership is a first uh, among Canadian provinces and formalizes cooperation uh, uh, amongst the province's GLAM sector with an overarching objective to encourage member participation in activities that will enhance learning opportunities and knowledge transfer amongst uh, professionals and uh, institutions. This includes uh, sharing professional expertise and knowledge to strengthen the capacity of all parties to advance their respective missions, exploring collaborative research projects, exploring public outreach opportunities to spark community engagement with knowledge and ideas, uh, identifying joint funding ventures uh, for projects of mutual interest and benefit in the areas of knowledge curation and public education. Identifying opportunities for new membership categories within the associations uh, to welcome allied professionals, which is an interesting development. Uh, providing member rates at the various uh, conferences amongst the, the associations. And considering uh, new awards to acknowledge and, and recognize and celebrate um, exceptional work in, in collaboration. Uh, currently, the MOU partners are working on what they're calling a toolkit, uh, which is meant to be a, a practical assembly of models and processes and tools such as asset mapping, uh, grant writing templates, press release templates, to assist uh, particularly small or very small GLAMs and community organizations to, strengthen, to be able to strengthen the process of engagement and their ability to partner uh, across sectors and with larger organizations, including our research libraries. Like the Ottawa, uh, like the Ottawa uh, Declaration Working Group, the MOU partners are also looking to map current cross-sectoral uh, research partnership activities and visualize those. And such mapping, I think, uh, will be interesting and can re reveal really a startling amount of activity. And simply as a relational example, here you see a recent mapping by my university of its community engagement projects. And uh, we were quite surprised to find uh, that we were uh, distributed so far around the world. Sorry to, to those in uh, Australia, um, 
<laughs> cut off there. We are doing something there, I'm sure. I don't know, I'll have to look later. Uh, so this is all well and good, uh, but what does cross-sectoral collaboration mean at the local level for, for a research library? We all, I'm sure, can think of examples. The first point I want to make, besides showing beautiful Victoria, uh, the first point I want to make uh, is that geography matters. Geography matters in our, within our workplaces, whose office is next to whose, for instance, and geography influences the shape of local collaboration as well, such as the Knowledge Quarter here in London or the Bloor Street Cultural uh, Corridor in Toronto. Geography matters if you're situated on an island, which I hardly need to say in this room, uh, but here I refer to Victoria, uh, particularly on Vancouver Island, which is separated from the cultural gravitational forces of, of both Vancouver and Seattle, uh, both short, short distances, distances away via the waters of the, the Juan uh, de Fuca Strait, and hence the city, which is also the seat of uh, provincial government, is blessed with an abundance of cultural institutions of significance, including the Royal BC Museum, the Provincial Archives, the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria, the very highly regarded Pacific Opera, Victoria, the Victoria Symphony, the University Art Collections, numerous well-established smaller museums, theater groups, and historic sites of significant to, significance to Canada's cultural heritage, as well as active and vibrant First Nations communities, and not to mention, of course, the University of Victoria as well. So no, um, I'm afraid, no earth-shattering uh, revelations here, except to encourage you to think about your own geographies and look for the easy, low-hanging fruit of cross-sectoral collaboration if you want to set yourself along this path. Uh, in the University of uh, uh, Victoria Library's case, establishing a solid, solid relationship with the local public library has been a key catalyst for, for both of our organizations in the development of innumerable partnerships, uh, such as um, the, just thinking about low-hanging fruits, co-sponsored uh, events like the one you see here on the right, uh, which featured David Mao. Some of you may know that the, it was Acting Librarian of Congress being interviewed by um, our chancellor at, at the University of Victoria, and who's a national media personality, uh, Sheila Rogers, on the stage of a local repertory theater uh, called the Belfry. So such a, a partnership is a simple way to access new event venues and extend the potential audiences for, for really all three of the, the organizations in this case. Digitization projects, of course, are also ripe for easy and creative partnerships. What you see on the left there is my colleague from Special Collections returning one of a number of uh, 19th century police uh, charge books and mugshot books that we uh, digitized as part of a collaborative project between the Victoria Genealogical Society and the Victoria Police Historical Society, who knew, who knew that existed, and the, <coughs> and, our, and the library. And at the completion of the project there, uh, we gave copies of the images back to the Genealogical Society, uh, which is crowdsourcing indexing uh, by their members and the charge books were returned uh, on via that historical uh, police vehicle, which uh, garnered a fair degree of, of interest and, and positive press coverage. And I'll just, as an aside, say that uh, increasingly over the past six years, uh, we in the libraries have uh, viewed, begun to view these partnerships as key components integrated into our development and fundraising efforts, uh, which have re resulted, I believe, as a, a direct result of some of our collaborations and more than doubling of both in-kind and, and uh, monetary gifts to the library compared to the uh, previous six-year period. So deeper collaboration. In 2013, UVic Libraries partnered with over a dozen community organizations to create what we called Shakespeare Onstage, Offstage, a critical event that continues to have uh, re reverberations across Victoria as it laid deeper foundations for arts and cultural collaborations in the region. The initial idea was um, to bring the only copy of the first and third folios in Canada, both of which are held at the University of Toronto, to Victoria to be displayed alongside uh, the second and fourth folios in an exhibit leading up to the Pacific uh, Opera's 100th performance, which was Verdi's Falstaff. Uh, the initial uh, collaboration between us and our art collections, uh, which hosted the exhibition downtown in our city center gallery, and the opera was built upon the, the library's already established strong relationship with the opera company formed a couple of years before by one of those low-hanging fruit uh, um, opportunities to, to partner around a, a separate event. It was also the first time, I think, in BC and possibly in Canada that the four, four folios had, had ever been displayed together. I had to convince people that anyone would come. Uh, to, to date, it's the highest attended ex exhibition that the art galleries have ever put on. 
Uh, the libraries then sought out uh, additional collaborators, and the event quickly caught the imagination of many, including the city council and the mayor, who were quick to, to join us and uh, proclaim six weeks of Shakespeare days, uh, leading up to the opera production. And eventually, we ended up with a multitude of partners, including local theater groups, the, the Royal BC Museum, the Provincial Archives, uh, the Provincial Legislative Library, Internet Shakespeare Editions, which is a major uh, digital humanities project based at UVic, local public schools where we work with teachers to, to um, create lesson plans, a craft brewery that brewed a Falstaff ale, uh, <laughs> faculty, of course, in humanities and fine arts, uh, the, the public library, and, and many others. These partners brought an array of, of, of events and learning opportunities, which uh, really we in the libraries could never have uh, even conceived of, and enriched programming. And, and what it really did was to b build very strong personal relationships across a diversity of organizations that do not naturally work together. Uh, the experience helped uh, establish a robust culture, I would say, of GLAM collaboration, one, one in which we now think of, of collaboration from the start and reach out to our colleagues across the region and across sectors uh, continuously. It's difficult, of course, to sustain such connections over time, and so we have sought other ways to inculcate uh, a local collaborative culture. Uh, the Vancouver Island Library Staff Conference is a, a key annual event that helps to foster trust and conversations across our organizations that lead to and make it easier to collaborate uh, around projects and make partnerships. It's a one-day event initiated by, by UVic libraries to bring together the island's academic, public, and special libraries, and as of next year, is being extended to our, all of our GLAM partners across all sectors uh, on the island. Um, in part, that's possible because of the, um, the unexpected support, and on the, the right, you can't see the, the names, but the, uh, the financial support we suddenly started receiving from, from uh, unions, uh, local publishers, and bookstores, the Ministry of Education just started to flow. So it, uh, it costs, costs us very little, and is uh, only moderate effort, and yet has, I think, great benefit to us. And, it's based on uh, the Tri Plus Conference, which I founded in Toronto now 13 or 14 years ago, which brings together the uh, three major research uh, libraries from the, the, the major um, institutions in Toronto for, uh, for collaboration, too. So, worth considering. So, I have the privilege to, to live and work on the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking peoples. Specifically, the, the Songhees, uh, Esquimalt, and Wasanic peoples whose historical relationships with the land uh, continue uh, very actively to this day. And Canada, in recent years, has begun to grapple more seriously with the legacy of its oftentimes devastating colonialist past through a process of what is termed truth and reconciliation with our indigenous communities. And the indigenous perspectives uh, in which the concept of time is nonlinear in which the land itself is a living library, and in which knowledge is based on an oral tradition that requires attentiveness to indigenous language revitalization, are, as you can imagine, a challenge to incorporate into established research library processes and, and structures. Engagement requires sensitive and respectful relationship building with numerous uh, individual communities. Uh, think back to Capra's conception of the complexity of community interaction and its impact on organizations. We're still early in this journey with our indigenous brothers and sisters, but it's a process that we, uh, that I think we believe across uh, research libraries in Canada, uh, I think it's fair to say, a process that will enrich the way we think about metadata, uh, preservation, access, research data, and partnership in the library, and, uh, and um, our spaces too, just to pick up on a point that was made earlier in the afternoon. It certainly led me to reflect personally more, more deeply over the past six years on what our partners give to us as much as what we give to our partners. At the risk of stating the obvious, our research libraries have a past, they have a present, and, they, and we have a future, though I would say the three are patently not the same things. We have moved from being primarily repositories of the products of research to institutions that have a role throughout the entire research process, from creation to data management to access to, to preservation. Our future, I think, in part, I believe, will be an era of collaborative engagement, in which we'll work increasingly in partnership across sectors. Think 
research data management, for instance, to extend new and effective ways of developing, disseminating, applying, and preserving knowledge for research and the public good, and being attentive to the connections between our research libraries and GLAM institutions, and actively seeking opportunities for partnerships with such, we open ourselves to a broad range of possibilities that leverage our strengths, as well as embed us ever more firmly as institutions that play a critical foundational and valuable role in scholarship, civic engagement, and ultimately the de democratic health of our countries. The architect of, of this wonderful library in which we gather once commented that, and I quote, libraries are, this, libraries are made of the stuff of myth. And so to every scholar, the library is a personal realm of secret topography. There are few, if any, other institutions in our world that have such an intimate relationship with their communities and the sustained level of trust and respect of those communities, as, as do our libraries, as our libraries have. We are unique as trusted sources of information and trusted connectors in our communities. And as such, research libraries can and should be guide, a guiding force that brings together partnerships to do more with more. In the passage from Abbott's Flatland, the response to the statement, either this is madness or it is hell, is it is neither, it is knowledge. Just as in Flatland, the move from two to three dimensions brings new perspectives and an opportunity to reassess and expand one's perception of reality, so too does the evolution from analog to digital, the evolution from repository to valued cross-sectoral partner provide the same opportunity for us. The passage from Flatland concludes, open your eyes once again and try to look steadily. I looked and behold a new world. Thank you.